All right, all right, LDBC, this is your boy Coach Shelton Harris, and you're live, live, live on the Coach Shelton Harris and Combat Sports Show Live. And guys, yeah, we started a couple of minutes early, but that's okay. I got the Battle Cat, Cindy Dandois, in the house. Cindy, how are you doing this evening? I'm doing good. It's been a busy day. I'm good. Thank yeah, you for asking. Yeah. yeah, you know, you got all, you told me you had all the kids with you. You, you know, now you got your two kids, right? And then who? who three, I have three. You got three kids. Wow. Yeah. yeah. Definitely a busy mom. Definitely a busy mm -hmm. mom. So now you have to get the kids all, you know, back from school. You got to talk to them, ask them how their day went. You know, that kind of no, stuff. No, because it's summer holiday. They don't have school today. Oh, so in Belgium, they, they don't have uh, they don't have to go to school in the summer? No, we have summer holiday. Summer really? break. Yeah. I was, You know what? I was under the impression that in Belgium, you guys had to go to summer school. You know, school year round. Wow. No, no, we don't. Shows how much I know. Well, that's cool. Well, Cindy, I am thankful that you took some time out of your day, okay, um, to come here. And people are going to be asking questions, and I'll read them off to you if you can't see them. But I, I'm, I'm really, I'm thankful. Like, I'm, I'm actually sitting here like, I got to control myself, and I got to ask these questions. But I am going to do it. Um, okay. So, Cindy, my first question is, okay, why do you think the UFC, you know, they, they just completely just dismiss giving you a second chance. Yeah. I don't know. The only thing what I can think is I, I, I had like one time, the first time I tried out for tough, I had like, maybe I said something wrong, wrong to Sean Shelby or something. And he doesn't like me for that. But that's the only thing I can think of. Okay. I'm not the best striker in the game. I understand. But like, I have a lot of other things who I do very well. So, um, yeah, I don't really know why they ignore me, like literally ignore me like that. Yeah. Now, Cindy, what could you have said to Sean Shelby to make? Because cause I'm looking at you now. Who could not like you? Come on. Oh, you know, I have something. It's called language barrier. And I want to say sometimes things and I just like say them wrong. And I think I called him a problem penis once. <laughs> and he didn't. I don't think he liked that. So okay, so in America, I guess when you say that word, I'm thinking, I'm thinking you may have called Sean Shelby a dickhead. I mean, is, is that? No, that's not it. It's like all men have problems and issues, and mm -hmm. all men have penises. So if you're a man and you're like doing difficult about things, then you're a problem penis. That's what I <laughs> made of it. But you can kind of tell that that's that's actually kind of hilarious. That, you know, <laughs> I mean, well, I I didn't, you know. When the word came out, I was like, oh, that maybe sounds wrong. And I think he thought the same thing, maybe. I mean, and I, I asked forgiveness, though, uh, but he didn't respond. So. Really? Oh, so you but apologize? Like, yes. I apologized by Twitter saying, like, oh, I'm so sorry, Sean, can you forgive me? But he didn't respond. So I don't think wow. he's forgiven. You might have to call old Sean on the phone, Cindy. You know, like, look, Sean, look, man. Okay, you know I got a language barrier. I, 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 come on, man. You know? I don't have his phone number. Oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> so. you know, we got, hey, you know, you got, I mean, you got a lot of friends in the UFC, you know. I, I know they know his number. Come on, all you Battle Cat friends. Y'all give Cindy the phone number. Cindy want to apologize to Sean Shelby. Come on. Mm -hmm. I yeah. did. Well, you know, hey, it's understandable. It's un <laughs> I mean, I thought it was funny, though. I, <laughs> it, I say funny. stupid things the whole time when it's in English, so I'm like, well. Well, For me, it was a small thing. I think he took it big. Yeah, you know, he probably made too much out of it. You know, maybe, maybe, maybe he is being. I, I know, I, I don't know. You know, maybe, maybe, maybe he is a problem penis, a yeah. very small one. Oh! <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> yes, Cindy that's did. why he feels bad. Oh no, no, oh, God Almighty, Cindy. Yeah, you know, it, it might, you know, might be. Who, hey, who knows? Who knows? But you know, we definitely know that you're uncut, you're unfiltered. You can pretty much let it, you know, go because this is a fan channel. And, Cindy, we already got people here. We already got people here that are asking you. And somebody agreed with you. Uh, uh, Dennis Espinoza, he keeps up with data here on this channel. He says that Sean is a very sensitive and delicate flower. So he, he you agrees see? with you. Yeah, that's what he said. I hurt his feelings. Oh, yeah. I'm so sorry, though. Yeah, like. you, you, you seem like the kind of person, like, you're just straightforward, you know, because I've watched a lot of interviews with you. You know, and you, you just seem like you're real straightforward with people. So, I mean, me, I, I can I can kind of appreciate that because I'm straightforward. I mean, is that is that a clear assessment of you? I don't know. I try to be sensitive and mark my words, but sometimes they just come out. 
I love it. I love it. Look, I, look. I just can't stop it. It's it's like I have no filter. Okay, so Cindy, when when you were going out for tough tryouts, you know, I saw you, and I was like, yes, Battle Cat's gonna be on tough. You know, I was actually happy. I made a video about it. I was pretty happy about that. And then you know, the wind kind of left my sail when I realized you didn't get picked, and I'm like. What the hell's going on around here? What, what's going on? Were you, okay, let me ask you this. Were you shocked, okay, that you went and picked? And were you shocked at who got picked? I was, like, shocked. Like, I, I actually, I, I asked before, like, to Misha to check if it would make sense to come over. Like, check with Sean, because I know he was, like, kind of pissed with me. So I was like, does it make sense? Like, do I have to come over to try out or do I don't make any chance? And he said, like, no, she makes it perfectly good chance so why not so i flew out for the second time and like you know it's hard because i i like i'm a single mom i pay all my bills myself so i like search for money like with sponsors and everything to get there uh and then i noticed like there were good featherweights but like i'm a top featherweight like i'm the, i was the highest ranked featherweight there because i'm number ranked number four now i think or number five i don't know and um and i have a 12 and 3 record and i beat some of the best girls so i was like you know what I speak English too, so there's this no excuse. I cannot speak English, so I cannot communicate with somebody in the house. So I was like, you know, I think I make a very good chance to get picked in the tough because it's the ultimate fighter, not the ultimate bikini or the ultimate banana. So, you know, <laughs> I make a good shot. And I was very happy to like be there and, and I hoped I would make it because that would be, you know, I have to combine everything. It's hard to work on my striking with the kids and the work and because I work more than full time. So I was so happy that I would be able to like work six or seven weeks with professionals at my striking because that's my weak point. I think I can handle myself everywhere. And I was like, I, I was so thrilled for that. Also, I have summer holidays, so I, I'm free. I I came to try out, so it was 157 pounds. So I started dieting, dieting immediately. And the moment I found out that I didn't make it, I was like 151 pounds perfectly on weight. Um, and I was so shocked because they picked a zero, zero girl. Yeah, you know, you, you, you had some comments about Bay Malecki, you know, and you said, uh, you know, Bay's a pretty face. And that, that, that's what you said. She is. She's gorgeous. <laughs> like, every man would like to see her in a tiny bikini, but, like, what is she going to do with Chris? She's going to boob smash her with her fake boobs? I don't know. <laughs> yes, guys, y'all better tell your parents. Look, Cindy Dan was uncut. She's uncut. Like, she got the microphone. She can say whatever she wants. Cindy's uncut, okay? She, she's putting it out there. I told y'all that she was going to just put it out there. You know what, Cindy? I'm going to be honest with you. I, 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 I agree. I agree with you about 99%. I really do. And I know she's a good striker, but, like, MMA striking isn't the same. I fought Yurina Bars, who is, like, one of the best, I think, the best 145-pound striker in the world. And she had no story against me because it's MMA and it's not striking. Like, so... Uh, yeah, you know, and you beat you beat Irene Jojo Bars like you beat her like you took her down because she was trying to you know she was trying to get an edge she was trying to strike and she you didn't touch me once you would not allow her to do it you wouldn't allow her to do it like you took her down and it was pretty much all she wrote you took and submitted and I'm like MMA and Muay Thai boy there's a difference it's levels to this <laughs> it's something else yeah. it's like oh I'm a great ping pong champion now I'm gonna play the Grand Slam and do tennis. That's not the same. It's oh, not the same. Oh man, I, 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 boy, this is good. So, Cindy, you got some, you got some very good wins. You know, you got some great wins on your resume. And I always used to tell people, you, you, you can't count Battle Cat out because, you know, yeah, where she lacks in striking, if she touches you, put a hand on you, that's it. Like you, like you, like I don't seen you put triangle chokes on people that, you know, they sitting there trying to squirm out of it, they can't get out of it. You know. I've seen you, you know, I've seen you like rear naked choke people that as soon as you lock it in, they can't move. I mean, you beat some of the best. I mean, you, you beat Marlos Conan, you know, who's like a legend in the game. You beat her and, you know, you beat up Megan Anderson. And that was kind of funny with you and Megan. You guys were going back and forth. And she goes, yeah, well, Cindy, you beat me three years ago. That was three years ago. I mean. I saw how her wrestling and her jiu-jitsu evolved. Let's do the rematch tomorrow <laughs> in my garden. <laughs> on my trampoline <laughs> no problem <laughs> hey, and no you know what it is actually I adore Megan it's good to have a little bit fire between us because that yeah. makes it interesting you know I think she's a great fighter she's a great striker and I 
I'm not even like really mad with her, but I like, you know, I like to pull the strings a little bit and I see how, see how she's getting upset, uh, upset. And I'm like, oh, let's pull some more. <laughs> it's fun to do, you know. Wait she a minute. has easy strings to pull. <laughs> so, Cindy, you're, you're trolling. Okay, so you, you're trolling Megan Anderson. That's what you're doing. Oh, wow. come on. She's a sweetheart. I know that. How are you going to explain this, though? You, you know, you, 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 you're a legendary in the game. And you have started trolling me and Anderson. I, you know, and when you started doing it, I was, it was funny. I was laughing, but I was like, dang it, look at Cindy. She's trolling. Yeah, well, you know, a little bit. <laughs> because I know every time when she opens her shared dog, there is that little red dot. Mert, 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 mert. <laughs> oh, damn. And I know she doesn't like it. So, well, let's use it a little bit more. Yeah. <laughs> Well, you know, you, you do kind of stay on the ass. But I tell you, though, you know, and she watches this channel. And, 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 you know, they'll say that they don't watch it. But her nutritionists, you know, have been on this channel. Uh, They've been watching She's doing such a great job. She's looking like a real athlete. She's Her striking is amazing. Yeah. Like, she's a good fighter. Like, I'm not going to lie. She's amazing. But, you know, it's good to have some back and forth. And for her, it's Pick good, on. too. Like, if we ever have the rematch, we have something going on, you know. Would you so it's good. I'm going to be there again. <laughs> so, or she's have to go start going to work on her wrestling defense because, yeah. <laughs> so do you think now that she could defend you in wrestling? No. No, she could I don't think there is. I don't think there is any woman who can defend my, me in wrestling. Like, only Sarah McMahon. Like, my wrestling is not easy. I know I look like I'm slow. Yeah. I look like I'm slow. And I move slow. And on the ground, I also look slow. But they... Like, I'm quick. My wrestling is, is quick. I, I got to so, be honest. When I first saw you fight, I'm like, man, who's this Belgium girl? Like, she like she about to get her ass whooped. Like, literally, that's what I was thinking. And then you, know, know. you, you were fighting Megan Anderson. And I'm like, yo, this Aussie girl, this Aussie girl finna knock her out. And then next thing I know, you got Megan in a pretzel. Megan sitting here squirming trying to get out. And then <laughs> submission. I said, Damn. This girl from Belgium can fight. This girl got it. She can fight. You know? So, I, you know, and then I started binge watching all your fights. The ones that I could find, I started just watching all of them. And, you know, I, I even watched, you know, I study them. And I'm like, whoa, man, she's transitioning from this. I want to talk about one fighter in particular. It's one. I really want to talk about it. Do you feel like King Rena, like she underestimated you? I, man, that fight was good. I think they all underestimated me. You know, the thing is, I think if I had a decent camp for King Arena, I would have been able to do even more. But I just came from 140 pounds fight three weeks before that. So they called me like, oh, you can fight King Arena. And I knew if I wouldn't take it that time that they wouldn't give it to me. So I was like, oh, fine. And they were thinking like she's going to be small. And I was small because I came there 150 pounds or something, 151. And Rina had a cut to do it. And I was like, you know, she's going to underestimate me. And she did. That's the thing. She just did. And they always do because I... I know I don't look like an athlete. Like I'm chubby. I have boobs. I I don't know. I have the hips. The I'm a little. You know, uh, once a fan said um, on the picture of me and Megan, Megan looks ripped and ready, and Cindy looks like she ate too many ice cream cookies. Uh, it's true. What can I say? I had no argument because it's true. Cindy, it's there's all nothing true. wrong. But there. you see, Roy Nelson. Yes. I see Roy Nobody Nelson. wants to get slapped by Roy Nelson. I don't no. want to get punished by him. Nobody does. You see Roy Nelson. And he doesn't look. And you see Daniel Cormier. You see him. I mean, oh, yeah. nobody want to get touched by them. Fedor. I... Yeah, Fedor. It, yeah. I just took an example. That's it. It's Fedor. And I was like, I want to be like Fedor. I don't want to be like uh, Randy Couture. No problem. I think the chubby side. Uh, Cindy, I don't think you chubby, and I don't think there's anything wrong with having hips and boobs. I, I think you're just you're a woman. You know, you you present yourself as a woman. You you go in there and you beat up people as a woman, and you come out the octagon and you're still a woman. You know, I I just think you're a woman. I mean, it, that's nothing wrong. There's no shame. You know, you are a woman. You know, you're a woman. You have children, and you look like a woman, and you're gonna stay a woman, and you still beat people like you. You know, you beating you beating some top people. Okay, so we can't even question that. So, you you were you were kind of you know you were looking at the people that made it, and I was looking at the people, and I I did some numbers. You know, the people that made it, you know, that got picked uh, for the for the tough show, you know, they've got a combined total of forty wins. Okay, all of the all of the veterans that didn't get picked, like people like you and Pam Sorison, you know, you guys have a combined total of sixty four wins. All the veterans that didn't get picked. 
So that should tell you, you know, like where the UFC is going with this, you know, like uh, you know, and I agree with you. They, they're going and the for thing looks. is, yeah. they picked some good bantamweights. Mm. They did. Pani Kianzat. I'm not saying anything bad. I think I can win from Pani, but still, she's a good bantamweight. Like she's Larissa Pacheco. She's a good bantamweight. She did one featherweight fight, only one, only one. Then um, the other one, Marcia Allen. Mm -hmm. I don't even think she's a good feather, a good bantamweight. She lost to Jessamine Duke, like. And that's somebody um, you beat. And, yeah. yeah, like, and I think Jessamine. I think Jessamine, Jessamine is amazing, um, but Marcia Allen, like, she's a good striker, but like MMA, hmm, I don't know. And Cindy, the comments they're coming in, Cindy, they're saying you are not chubby. God, look at all, Cindy. You got look at all this love you got. You got so uh, much love. You got usually everybody. I get I get don't get love. You usually they say I'm a sucker mom and I should retire fighting because I can't. <laughs> then then I'm like, well, if you want to come and lay between my legs, right, and we'll see. <laughs> hey, well, you know we got we, get, we we you know we probably got some horny guys on the channel, so don't tell them that because they might they might get the wrong idea, you know, thinking that you just mean lay there, but no, you mean choke you the hell out of Don't want that. Up. You don't want it. You don't want it. You don't want it. I promise they don't want it. <laughs> no, 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 no. You pop our heads off. So, yeah. So, yeah. You know, I was talking about King Rain. I felt like uh, she underestimated you. But I thought that was a good win. I thought that was a great win because, you know, you went in, you beat this undefeated prodigy that's there in Japan. And the crowd was against you, you know. like, And then by the end of the fight, the crowd was cheering you after you won. I know. They were amazing. Japanese fans. That was beautiful. Yeah. Uh, beautiful those people are beautiful damn so respectful they are like i took their champ out and they were like so nice to me that's awesome yeah, you know she was being very like just rude like you you know you were being cordial and she just she was just being rude you know weigh-ins face-offs but i thought the face-off y'all did boy I, I i think you got it though when she faced off with you and i think she actually knew like wait a minute this girl is coming to fight but um, in, in round one, I think she realized, wait a minute, this isn't some of these fighters I've been fighting. This this person is on a whole other level. So, <laughs> And that's when you took her down the first time. She couldn't get up. I was like, oh, man, she's done. I was like, yeah, yeah. Cindy is winning the damn fight. This is good. This is good stuff. I was still jet lagged, though. Like, I came in two days before the fight, too. Like, they did, like, they threw me in two days before. She said jet lagged, like, way too small. Like, if I ever do a rematch with her, then I'm going to be, like, in, in a, it's gonna be different. I think I can submit her too. Like now, it was a it was a hard fight. Damn! Like the girl is strong. Uh, yeah. Yeah, you know, and I, I mean, and she is one of the best fighters in the world. Do, do, do you think she's really that good? Because I thought she, I thought it was a good win. But people, you know, when I when I have to argue, I make videos, and I made a lot of videos. I, I made quite a few videos in defense of you know what you've done and i do it for a lot of the women that just don't get to shine and i was like guys king rena is a quality win like that's a like she's good she's a quality win so i don't think we should he won it. from look you know Shayna basler you know yep. how amazing yep. she is actually yep king rena won from china yep. so i knew when i flew there she wasn't a piece of cake i knew that but she thought i was so that's a big mistake yeah yeah, yeah, kid almighty. It was crazy. It was crazy. But you, yeah, you did good. You did good. You did good in that fight. Um, so now, what do you think in your mind is the future of the 145 pound division in the UFC? Do you think that they're going to scrap the division? Do you think, no. I mean, do you think Chris Cyborg is going to stay in the division? I mean, what are your thoughts about that division and everything that's going okay. on? As they are doing now, they killed the division. They killed it. They cannot let. Uh, the zero zeros or the totally green featherweights who are inside fight Chris, but they're gonna they're gonna let the winner probably from tough fight Chris, and they're gonna give uh, Chris Amanda Nunes, who is again a 135er. So probably Chris is gonna fight two 135ers. Then her contract is over, uh, and I don't know for sure what she's gonna do or she's going in boxing, uh, but I hear rumors she's going to Bellator. Uh, and the goal for me at the end of the day is and will always be to face her. That's my that's my goal. Um, so I'm going, I, I want to go wherever she goes. So if I can get a fight with Chris, that's the one, that's the thing I want, you know. Now she going to boxing. You're going to go into a boxing ring with her and box with her, you know. 
I can't. But I think I don't think she's gonna stop MMA. I think she's going to Bellator. I think that's what she's gonna do. Yeah, yeah. You know, I think Scott Coker. He's um, uh, he's making, he's being very aggressive. You know, he's being very aggressive. Um, they got the DAZN deal going on, and so I think that Scott Coker is gonna have some available resources to really get these women in. Cause I've interviewed four Bellator fighters. And you know what? And I asked all four of them the same question. Hey, would you guys consider going to the UFC? And I had two of the fighters tell me that'll be a hell no. Like literally, you know, they're happy. You know, they seem to be very happy at Bellator and they don't want to leave. So I see like, that. I see that. I'm uh, like, the thing is, um, for me, the, the goal always was Chris. I saw Julia Butts fight this weekend. Oh, that woman came bang also. Like, um, I know Bellator has like, is, is having a lot of very good guys from the UFC. They're leaving with a reason. Um, I don't think there will be a 145 division in the UFC or it's going to be a fake one. Um, I don't want to be in the fake ones. Uh, I never took easy fights. I just fight wherever I can, whenever I can. I and I, uh, I never run. I, I didn't ever run for a hard fight. So I'm like, uh, I, I'm thinking like, if I can get a chance in Bellator, uh, I'm totally open to take it. Okay, now you got one of your favorite viewers, uh, Solo Q. Okay, he's definitely, you know, he's one of your favorite Twitter. For matter of fact, he speaks to you often on Twitter, and. Awesome. Uh, he said that he's completely behind you 100%. Like, he's behind you, and uh, he thinks that you are actually an asset to the sport. This is solo cue, you know. Um, you know, and he said, please tell Cindy I said, hey, because I'm one of her biggest supporters, you know. So I had, to, I had to put that in there. You know, he's he's definitely, you know. Hi! Thank you for the support. Uh, solo cue. Okay. All right. Um, do you guys, now let me ask the comment thread. What questions do you have for Cindy, okay? Because now I'm looking in the thread. And guys, you know, ask the Battle Cat questions because if you don't, then I'm going to kind of go in deeper and dwell into this a little bit more. And she's waving at you guys. You know, she loves you. All you guys. I mean, I mean, I, I love the Battle Cat. The Battle Cat's incredible, okay? Um, I'm, I'm excited right now. I can't believe that I'm actually talking to her. It's it's dream come true. Dream come true. Um, okay, Cindy. Okay, this guy says Cindy has courage, has fought. Chris uh, has more courage than Rhonda. <laughs> Okay, all right, yeah, okay, they're picking on Ronda Rousey. Okay, we don't want to do that. All right, so no, when you what, – what what does your future look like? What do you think you're going to be doing since, you know, the UFC, they don't want to take a risk, you know, with, with, with the battle cat. Like, what's your future? Um, I think for me, um, if the UFC – like, the UFC is clearly not interested in the 145 division and I need the division – um, and I don't want to be a number. Like I feel like, till now I'm treated as a number. Like, um, like oh, just fly over here and try out and uh, get another other number. I don't think my record. Uh, I think my record is worth more than that. So I think I'm gonna talk to like uh, Bellator. Uh, I need a home. I need a division, and I need somebody to care for me who I can care for. Um, so that's what I'm gonna try to do. Uh, I think. Okay. Yeah. So. In your mind, do you believe Scott Coker is going to take a chance on the Battle Cat? I pray he will take a chance on me. And I will do my absolutely best to like promote Bellator then as much as I can. Um, but I want to be valued. And I don't want to, like, uh, I, a lot of people talk shit about me. But, like, I think my record proves that I, I deserve better. I don't talk shit about you. Yeah, but a lot of people do. That's okay. <laughs> so. That's okay. Those people not me, though. So don't don't worry about those people. Not important. You, you know, we, we 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 you know we're not even worried about those people. Those people, they stupid. Let's worry about the people who who with you. Okay. So, did you take was the fight when you fought Alexis Davis? Was that a short notice fight for you? No, it wasn't. But it was oh. a cut to one thirty five, and uh, I hoped that I was able to fight one forty five. But there were not one forty five fights at the time because Chris was in suspension. And they weren't sure what they would do with the division because Jermaine was already running from Chris the moment she knew she would come back. <laughs> um, yeah. So she, she there, it was all 135 or no fights. And I was like, you know what? I can cut. Like, I'm a professional. And they gave me a hard fight because Alexis has about the same style, one. And I broke my foot like the first 30 seconds of the fight. Like, snapped it because I was way too low in weight. My body wasn't that strong. So I snapped my foot and then that like it, it wasn't my best fight and i know i didn't perform as i should have but you know what the uc cut me for that at 135 and i came back i fought four fights higher 
and I won four in a row and three I stopped did with stoppages so I'm like you know I'm in this game I'm not here to like play around I want to fight and I need opportunities do and at my own weight class I'm not cutting to 135 anymore for nothing if you see want to sign me back 135 say no thank you it's not good for me it's not healthy do you think it's also too that in their mind that they think that your style is not very like exciting to them you know like 100 percent they they think like oh like they think I suck that's what I think Okay, so Conan, okay, to do these people do research, I feel like with the featherweight division, I've been an advocate for you guys. I've been a big advocate, and I've been pushing this for about 13 months now. You know, I've, I've been getting a lot of threats and stuff about this because I really believe that they're a lot of talent. What do you say? Because I've heard people tell me that the featherweight division, they suck. They don't have any good fighters. What do you say about that? Because I, I completely disagree with that statement. I mean, what, what would you say to that if somebody, if some guy that sits on the couch all day that, you know, does nothing but eat chips and donuts and, you know, he wants to have an opinion that says that? What what would you say about that? They don't realize that everything started with the 145 division. Gina, Gina Carano was too big to cut to 135. She was a 145er. Chris Cyborg at that time was a 145er. Everything started with the 145 division. They didn't do any research at all then. Then they don't know. Like Gina Carano is one of the best of all time. She was a 145 and she wasn't the 135 and she wasn't a small girl. She was a big girl. That, that time, like, um, Ronda Rousey, I don't know if you remember, but she didn't start 135. She started 145. Preach. She ran because she didn't want to fight Chris, but she Preach. was 145. <laughs> yes. Like, Preach. It is what it is. Uh, Ediane Gomez, like, she's an amazing 145. -er. Same, she has the same problems as I have. If she has to cut to 135, she loses a lot of her strength. She isn't that healthy there. Um, yeah, Julia, but what an awesome 145. Charmaine Tweed, like, did you see that woman fight? Latoya Walker, Pam Sorensen, uh, Sinet Kavana. Sneak Kavanaugh. Go ahead, go, keep yeah. going, keep going. Daria Ibrahimova is an awesome 145. -er. <laughs> like, uh, Amanda Bell, like, dang, that lady has power. Like, we have so many good girls, but they're like, oh, yeah, dang, those girls might have hips. We don't want them. Yeah. <laughs> Preach. That's it. Preach. I feel it like is. I'm in church listening to the pastor. Thank you. Th you know, I've been saying this for so long. <sighs> and I, I only, okay. like, said, like, maybe, like, ten, there are so many. I can, like, 145 is over the world. I can, like, just sum them up. King Rina is going down to 145 too now. Like, she's amazing. Rina Kai fought 145 before. Like, that girl is also very good. Yep. So, we have so many. And I said, you know what? I said King Rina was going to try 145. I'm telling you, you, King Rina, you got you got even, uh, 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 you got Gabby Holloway running around here. You got newcomer, um, God, you got Felicia Spencer who's coming up. Oh, yeah. You got, well, you got so many featherweights, and it, 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 it drives me crazy. Like, I took a hat one day when I found out that you – I found out when you and Pam Sorison and I found out when, when Edie and Gomez – Zara, Zara Dos Santos. Zara Dos Santos. Oh, and then, that uh, woman, like, she's good, man. She's so Frosto. good. I, actually, did you saw the fight be between Kavanaugh and, and uh, Zara? I, I did. I did. It was uh, close, man. Like, I wouldn't be mm, – it was a close one. Cindy. I loved it. I destroy, I got a lot of these hats. I took a hat when I when I read the news. My uh, guy Dennis Espinosa, he's in charge of the information around here. I took my hat. I destroyed my hat when I found <laughs> out. I'm not I'm not upset that those people made it because I think there's some there's some okay fighters there. Yeah. But I was I was upset that not one not one damn veteran, you know, not one. You and know, ranked like I'm ranked. Me. Zara's ranked. Pam Sorensen is ranked. Where are we? <sighs> It, 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 was, it was really a tough pill to swallow. It was tough. And I was talking to Pam a couple of days ago, and it's the same thing. It was it was a tough pill because out of that whole class, you've got the better resume of everybody. You've got the better resume. You face more people. Yeah, and, and people don't understand that, yeah, you know, just because you don't specialize in striking, you know how to deal with strikers. Like, you dealt with Jarena Jojo Bars. I mean, striker, you know. You dealt with, um, you, hold on, Megan? I'm trying to you dealt with yeah. Megan Anderson, who's a decent striker, okay? You dealt with, uh, well, Evans is not a striker, but you dealt with uh, Conan, you know, who was very good. You dealt with high-level grapplers. You dealt with high-level strikers. And you've seen all that stuff. So I, it, it, it And I don't me. get KO'd that easy. I'm like, man, if, if, if I'm such a terrible striker, well, knock me out, please. Knock me out. Try it. Yeah, it's frustrating. But they're not knocking me out. So I'm like, as long as you can't knock me out, shut up about my striking. 
<laughs> yeah. And guys, in the comment section, I just want to say, you know, guys, be a little, you know, be respectful, okay? Cindy is a mom. She got three kids. So let's keep, you know, don't say anything, you know, really just crazy or just, you know, no, no, like, like creepy comments, okay? Let's keep all that to a minimum and let's respect this woman. Yeah, yes. nobody's licking my feet today. Somebody want to lick your feet? Ugh. Oh. <laughs> really? P people send yeah. that to you? Mm-hmm. Yeah, y'all. So here, we guys, we respectful to women. You know, we got to be respectful. So don't, don't, please don't leave those comments. You can ask questions, but don't ask you no dumb ass questions, okay? Just don't, okay? All right, okay, Cindy, here's a question for you for somebody here, and I got to watch this. Uh, oh, George Page in the Super Chat. Now, Cindy, what the Super Chat is, is that um, people will, we have conversations when I talk on this channel, they, they donate money. And I give that to, like, really young fighters. Like they don't have any experience that they're trying to do stuff because to a young fighter that's O and O, you know, even getting gas money or just buying groceries, it's a lot to them because they can't afford some of that stuff. So mm -hmm. I give all my, my super chat dollars, I give it to fighters. So that's what I do. So that's awesome. Well, I had my one of my sponsors, like now he isn't anymore because like he has some health issues, left MMA. He's been like being so great for us too, like yeah, making money yeah. and just giving it to us to help us out. Wait yeah. a minute, Cindy. That's People can sponsor you, right? Yeah, they can. Okay. So first, before I go into the next question, how can people put money in your pocket? That's what we want to know right now. How? Well, when I when I fight coming up, I uh, sell plays on my banner or on my butt <laughs> for prints or something. And then uh, they can uh, send the money to my uh, – my brother is doing that because I'm very bad with paperwork. <laughs> He's um, PayPal. Like, so we do it like that. Now, how much would it cost to get a print? Depends on how big it is and where you want it. Like, uh, I think it's like on something on my banner, like a uh, hundred dollar, like something on my on my butt, like two hundred or hundred fifty dollars, things like that. Oh crap! So if I gave you two hundred dollars, then you could put a print. You know, you, 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 I mean, you could put the coach's logo on the front of your shorts on your butt. Yeah. Hey, I'm gonna do that. <laughs> the awesome. coach is the coach is gonna do that. Yes, I'm gonna do that. Yes, I am going to do it. I, God, my, hey, tell you what, guys, the Super Chat dollars today, whoever give them, guys, we're going to, hey, we're going to get um, a print on Cindy Dandois. Yes, we're going to get the Battle Cat on there, guys. <laughs> I can't wait. I can't wait. That's what I want to do. Okay. Good. All right, Cindy, a question here in the comment thread. This is from uh, Guitar Babe 21 and then I have one from Dennis Espinosa. Let me do Dennis first. He was first. Cindy, are you focusing on working your stand-up – Okay, hold on, hold on, see another one. Are you focusing on, dang, wait a minute, I lost it. Oh, are you focusing on working your stand-up to set up your wrestling ground game? That, that's what I usually do. Uh, like, I'm working my striking every day. Like, I go to the striking classes, and uh, I still, like, I'm not, like, the the person who's going to knock people out immediately, but I have some power, and the thing is, like, I, s I use it to set it up, to set up my judo or set up my wrestling. So, like, that's that's what I usually do. Okay. That's a good question. Boy, y'all, boy, then do us. Hey, okay, now we got, she got kids, so I can't keep her all day, so we're going to ask, okay? Um, okay, the next question was, uh, I'm sorry, I'm looking at him trying to find him. So, I'm looking at you, I'm multitask. I'm a teacher, so I can multitask too. I'm uh, also a teacher. See? Wow. See? Well, you, teach, you teach big kids, small kids, middle kids. I teach uh, middle school. Middle Middle school and high school. Wow. There you go. Boy, I bet your kids, your kids ever say, hey, Miss Dandois, you know, we saw you on TV fighting. Yeah, yeah, they do. They follow it. They're like big fans. Okay. They're well, awesome. well you know, hey, I'm a fan. You know what? Tell your kids, tell them to stay in school. That's what you tell them. Okay. Do. Good Tar Babe 21 asks, Cindy, how do you manage fighting and your kids at the same time? I don't. Actually, sometimes I wonder myself. I think it's with help of God because uh, everything has to, like, flow in automatically. Like, the kids come with me to the gym, for example. They train their own classes. Then they make their homework in the gym. I correct it, like, look, go over it with them after my training. Um, like, it's a, it's something where we're rolled in it, you know? Like, we're, we're, we're like, all combined. We, we're combining everything. That's what we do. If, when I go for a run, my daughter is coming to run with me, for example. So that's how we do it. And I have full days. I start when I have fight camp, like 5.30 in the morning. I go for a run, and then the day starts. And I only go to sleep like 12 in the night. Wow. So. 
Y'all, Cindy Dendroy is paying the price. Okay, Super Chat. Somebody donated $6.57. We're, hey, boy, we're going to get that print. We're going to get that print. We're going to get it. I'm telling you. Cindy, boy, well, that print's coming. We, we, we're going to do it. Okay. Uh, now, this person asked. Um, okay, he said he's going back to work. I'm sorry. Okay. All right. I'm trying to see if I see any more of the. Oh, okay. Yes. Okay, this is a, this is an amateur fighter. Her name uh, is the War Machine, Brittany Neme. You know, so she's starting her career. And she asked you, she says, does does she, do, do you get nervous before a fight? And how do you handle being nervous? I'm going to be very honest. I don't get nervous anymore. Like, actually, I don't think I never did. Because what you can tell her or what I can tell her is the hard work is already done when you enter that cage. Now the fun part starts, you know. You're going in there because you love it, because you like it. And the training and the dieting and the weight cut, that's the hard part. And the fighting is the fun part. So you already did, you already have written the story. And the only thing you're going to do now is like put the end on it. And it can go either way. You're only with two of you in that cage and God's watching over you. So just go in there and have fun. That's you can, what I can do. You can tell she's a teacher, man. She talking about the story, putting it, putting it. Look, look, Cindy, you know, I mean, you got everybody here uh, smiling. Okay, Keith Brown, MMA and Boxing, asked the same question. So I'm not going to have her uh, re-answer. She already answered, okay? Um, you know, he gave $5. God, hey, y'all. Oh, thank you. We, we finna get this. This print coming. God, this print finna be a reality. I can't wait, Cindy. I can't wait. Man. Okay. Um, they want to know, are you right now in talks with Bellator? Um, not not really, but I'm, I'm going to work on it for sure. Like, I'm going to try to reach out and... Uh, find a way to uh yeah to get it done okay. um yeah there's a lot of talent there and uh i have my eyes on some of the girls there i really would love to face uh i think they're great and uh yeah you got julia gonna be... wood over there to leap the nogueta i mean you yeah, got and, anger uh, fist anger fist blanco you know yeah man. kavanaugh yeah the, so, like, that's, that's awesome because they also have europe cards and then I don't have to fly that far, so that would be like really great. And I have a good following here in Europe, so uh, for the European fans, I think that would be nice too. You got a good following here. Okay, the last thing, okay. Um, and Ed Harris the Third says that he is going to troll Scott Coker. He's going to troll Scott Coker on your behalf until troll he him. says, "Okay, okay." She said it, Ed. She said it, Ed. You got Coffee. a job to do. Let's go, Ed. Okay, Chris Cyborg. Yeah. How long have you been wanting to fight? Chris Cyborg. I think about three or four years now. Yeah, okay. something like that. Okay, so where do you see where do you see weaknesses in Chris's game that you could exploit, being a very good high level grappler? Well, I don't I don't say there are weaknesses, but I know where her strengths are, and I'm not playing in that game. So like, I, there's no way I'm gonna strike with her. Like everybody knows that. Like that, it's not secret. Like, I didn't strike with Jurina Bars, who is, like, I think an even better striker than uh, Chris. So, um, I don't know, but I'm going to test her on different levels. I don't say she will be weaker there, but if we don't try it, we don't know it. And I saw Jana Kunitskaya trying the wrestling on her, but I think I'm a better wrestler than Jana. She's a yeah. better striker. I'm the best of a better wrestler. So, I don't think Chris had ever, like, she said, like, oh, Daria Brigimova is a great wrestler, but I submit Daria in the first round. Uh, yeah, so she Brad never Mo. dealt with a real wrestler before. So uh, I'm curious, and I want to try it out. So you're saying now you now you saying if you can put hands on Cyborg, you saying that you can probably get the upper hand in this fight. For sure, otherwise I wouldn't try it. Like I, why would I do that? No, I think I I think that's an area where we have to test her. If we don't test that, that's the only area where she hasn't been tested actually. She said it. She said it, y'all. She said it. Y'all heard it. Y'all heard it. <laughs> God, dog. Hey, check it out. Okay. Like, Holly Holm is a great striker, but she couldn't get her power on Cyborg. Like, I'm not going to get my power on Cyborg in striking. Like, everybody knows that. But I know I'm a good wrestler, and I know I have good judo combined, and I know my grappling is also quite okay. So, you know, okay. let's try something else. She said, boy, 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 y'all. She said, let's try it. Let's do it. Okay. The Warm thing is, everybody said Ronda couldn't be beaten till Holly showed her weakness. But if Holly wouldn't have tried what her weakness was, who would have known? Nobody would have known. Wow. You know, so. 
Wow, Cindy Dan. Wow, hey, Cindy is unfiltered. She's uncut today. We got a few more people in the uh, super chat, Cindy. Boy, look, it's coming. We're we going to get this. I told you. Uh, the War Machine, Brittany Neiman, put in $2. Uh, was, uh, Guitar Babe 21 gave $10. Dennis Espinosa put another $25 in. We're, awesome. we're going to get that patch, y'all. It's coming. <laughs> Woo, I feel good about that. Yeah. And uh, Keith Brown, MMA in Boxing, he also, um, he, yeah, I think I said his name. Okay, so you know that you'll come into that fight. Do you know that you'll be a heavy underdog when you fight Cyborg? Yeah, for sure. Everybody's going to be an underdog when they fight Cyborg. If they let Julia Butt fight Cyborg, she's going to be an underdog too. Julia Butt already said she don't want that fight though. She don't want it. Nah. Well, she said that uh, they asked her the question, and I got to look at how they posed it. They asked her, they said, uh, you know, would you ever consider going to fight Cyborg? Now, at the time, she said, well, no. But now, you know, when they asked her again recently, she said, well, I know that one day me and Cyborg, we do have to face each other. You know, that's that's what she said recently. But at first, you know, she wasn't really excited about going to possibly face Cyborg. I mean, you got a lot of people that didn't want to face Cyborg. You had, you know, Jermaine, Megan Anderson. I, I felt like they didn't want to fight Cyborg. I mean, no, think? I, I think so. Yeah. So the thing is. I think, and for sure, because now she's changing her mind already a little bit. Like, maybe we have to face one day. I think there is them talking about Chris going to Bellator. Wait. And then there is no running. Like, somebody will have to face Cyborg. But if they don't find anybody, it's no problem. I'm here. And I know Pam Sorensen is also there. So, and I don't know Zara is also there. So, like, there are girls who want to fight Cy Cyborg. They're just, like, lying if they say there is nobody. There are enough. I've been predicting in a year that Bellator in about 12 to 14 months, they're going to have the resources to really get you guys and actually <laughs> actually pay you guys what you guys are worth, you know. Because right Fingers now, I think, I think everybody's waiting. You know, everybody's the UFC is the money bag right now. But I think if Bellator can actually get the money bags going. And I like Bellator, too, because you guys can still have sponsors. You know, you can have sponsors in the ring where... And can be you. Like, I can dress myself up for wings. Like, I wasn't allowed to do that with the UFC. Like, they made problems of my wings even. So, yeah. Wait a minute. They said something about the fairy wings. Yeah, yeah. They weren't happy. Like, I had to, like, ask it a million times. They changed my walkout song because they didn't like it. You cannot be like W. That's why I said I don't want to be a number. Those damn bastards. They told you to take the fairy wings off. You know what? That, that's, I'm pissed off. I now. had pixie dust and I couldn't use it. Wait a the pixie, <laughs> Cindy, uh, I'm upset about that. No pixie dust alarm. You know, and I'm a pixie dust fan. These damn bastards. You know what? They, you can't have any fun around there. You know, Jesus, man. But you know, they did that. They, oh, go ahead. They do, they do good. They do good things too. Like now with the flyweight division, they do good things. But for the featherweights, like they're not serious about it. And I'm a featherweight. Like I'm not a bantamweight. I can make it, but it's not healthy. So. Yeah. Yeah, it's not. And you didn't. You didn't look like yourself when you was fighting. See, now I know the truth. I thought it was a short notice fight, but actually, you know what? You you had to go down and wait. And I was wondering, like, I was like, damn, man, she looked. She did. You just looked like you were trying to survive, like you were holding on. And the takedowns, you were getting takedowns. And I'm like, okay. Now Cindy get these takedowns. You know, Cindy's about to transition, but it's almost like you didn't have any energy to start transitioning into into some of your favorite submissions. You know, you were just it wasn't the energy. It's like my foot was broken, like the top part, so I couldn't push on it. You know, so there is no passing if you cannot push on your foot. There is no striking, really? even like it's always not very good. But like you, I felt like if I would give a little push on the foot, like oh yeah. And y'all, I want y'all to listen to this, man. Really, when y'all look at this woman, okay, yeah, we 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 having fun, we laugh. But this woman finished a fight on a broken foot, y'all. And it, it just, it, it, there's nobody talking about this, you know? Like, she finished a whole fight against a top-level opponent in Alexis Davis with a broken foot. Was still able to take Alexis Davis down multiple times with a broken foot, y'all. Battle Cat is amazing. It's I, no I, excuse, though. Like, I didn't perform as I had to, and I know. It's no problem. You know, sometimes you show up, and sometimes you have not the best day, you know? Like, it happens. We all had it, and I, I got punished very hard for that, but um, I had, like, I saw days where girls didn't show up, like, for sure. Like, all of us, we have days where not the best. Yeah. It happens. It happens with the boys, too. Like, did you, like, I love Francis and Gano, but this fight this weekend, he didn't show up either. We have it. I yeah. fell asleep during that fight. I actually, I fell asleep. I had a fight party, and I was asleep watching that fight. I was, 
I, I was out cold. I'm like, man. Yeah, and both vibes are great. But we have good days, we have bad days, and that's life. You know, it's the same as at my job. Like I come in school, I teach five great days, then I mess a lesson up, and I'm like, well, what was, what was I doing? Like they were, <laughs> you no. Know, yeah, yeah, sorry. Like, what can I say? You probably might have had one too many cocktails a day before. I mean, who knows? You know, you know, might have had a little bit of wine and. You know, instead of drinking a glass of wine, you might have drunk a whole bottle of wine. I mean, Cindy, you know, we, we, we just don't know, you know. Um, yeah. I'm just playing, which, okay, well, you know, definitely, you know, you, you definitely talked about Cyborg. The last question, Cindy, we got to get out of here, and I know you got to go because you've been here for a while, and I, I appreciate it. Your time is valuable. I, I, I Honestly, I'm sincerely appreciative of this. Okay, what are your chances, let's say, if you were to fight Julia Budd? Oh, um, I think I can win that fight. I think, I think Julia Budd is a great fighter. I saw how she dealt with Marlou. She threw her around, but she, there's no way she can throw me around like that. There's no way. Wow. So what she does now lately, she's a great striker, okay. But she doesn't get challenged in the wrestling either. She does pretty good wrestling herself. But I know I'm, I'm, like, I'm a really good like wrestler too. So I'm like, she cannot dull me around like that. So if she want to get that top position, top position she had on the other girls, with me, yeah, good luck. But I think it's going to be harder with me. Um, and, um, yeah, I know I will, I will be the underdog too. Like, I am always the underdog. I was the underdog with Jessamine. I was the underdog with Megan. And always I will be. You um, was the underdog against Darina Bars too. They, oh, they, yeah, hold yeah, it. You were, the under, you were like a big underdog. I'm like, damn. Okay. And I was like, this Belgian girl might, you know, she probably, you know, this Belgian girl about to get her ass whooped. But, nope, I was wrong. Mm-hmm. First time I saw you fight. You went in there and then you whooped Jarena's ass, and I and I'm a Jarena fan. I'm like, damn it, she beat Jarena. I'm a Jarena fan. Like she's the the Bellator kickboxing champ, so that's a good point for. Hi, Scott. I I beat the Bellator kickboxing champ. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, yeah. since you since you giving messages out, let's just go ahead and get them in. Let's start. We then we're gonna go in a minute. You know, and I'm not I'm not rushing you off. Look, you you can say what you want. You can stay. I don't care. You can talk to me for a thousand days, but I know them kids ain't gonna appreciate that. Um, no, I have to go almost. Yeah. Okay. The call out. Chris okay. Cyborg watches this channel from time to time. I know. She How already you... knows. Like, we spoke face to face. She knows. Like, she knows I want her. <laughs> okay. She knows. So, so uh, like, yeah. Uh, what I want, what I hope for is that Belter gives me a small chance to maybe fight uh, Kavana as a contender fight or maybe fight Julia Budd because I think our records are quite even. Mm-hmm. I think I'm 12 and 3 and she's what, 12 and 2? That's quite even. We're yeah. both veterans. Uh, I think I have a lot of experience to bring to the table and I hope I get a chance there so I can go get that belt and when Chris decides to come over to Bellator, Julia don't have to fight her if she don't want to but she can get it from me. Okay. Try it. Do it from me. Well then, listen. Do the perfect call out to Julia Bud right now. Like, call her out. Let, let's, let, let, let's see Cindy Dendois in action. Okay. Okay, Julia, I know you're watching me now. Like, uh, I saw you wrestling. It's pretty impressive, but I know mine is better. So, uh, yeah, put a belt on the line against me, I would say. It's going to be fun. Okay. Julia, she called you out. And lastly, <laughs> last two things, Cindy, and it's time to get out of here. Misha Tate, what does Misha Tate what has she been to you? Because I always see Misha Tate with you. Mm-hmm. Well, you know what? The most important thing that she is for me is that she's my best friend. And that's like, that's all that I can say. Like, she will help me wherever she can. Uh, but the one thing I want from Misha and it's the only thing I really want and need for her. I don't need money or favors or, you know. The only thing what I want for her is a friendship, and that's the most val- va- valuable thing I have from her. And she's my best friend, even though she lives on the other side of the planet. I wouldn't trade tra- tra- uh, tra- 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 her for anything. I love her. I love her daughter. And yeah, we're, she's always around because she's my best friend, and that's it. That's what's up. Yeah. It's called friendship, y'all. You don't sell your friends out for money. Cindy, you, you know what? You seem like you make a great friend. Like, you know, you're probably one of those friends that Misha could tell you stuff, and Misha could trust you. Like, you're not one of those people that's got a big mouth and blab everything, are you? I don't, I don't want to make her angry because she knows too much. Oh, ah, okay. Well, see. <laughs> see? So you can't no, have no. Misha blabbing out everything. Uh-huh. What's, it's dangerous. What's... No, no. She's, she's a sweetheart, you know? Like, Misha is a very good person. And uh, 
that's that's important. Her friendship is is most important to me. Like for the rest, I don't care what. I of course she's a great fighter, but I don't care about her fighting or her money or whatever. Like I don't care. I can sit with Misha in a tent in the middle of nowhere, both a glass of wine and have the best day ever. And that's 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 what friendship is about. You know? So that's good. How did I know you like wine and you're from Belgium? How, 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 how did I guess that? God dog it. Wine, what? chocolate, and cheese, my friends. It's a magic book. <laughs> <laughs> well, Cindy, it's a couple of things that I am gonna do. Okay, we're, we're gonna buy that. Uh, we're gonna buy that spot on your uniform, and you know, definitely want to do it before your next fight. You just have to. Uh, is, is your next? Do you, do you know when you're gonna be fighting next? And that's probably all I need to know. Well, I hope. I hope to get a chance from Bellator. If not, I'm fighting in October on my brother's card in, uh, in Belgium and I'm going to do the main event probably. So October is the last day that I will be fighting, at last. Uh, but if I get a chance in Bellator, of course, since the UFC is having no 145 division uh, wow. and is collecting tongs and books and bananas instead of 145ers, um, then, uh, yeah, then it will be October for sure. Okay. So we're gonna get that. We're gonna get that in quickly, like definitely before this month's over. I'm gonna, I'm gonna have that submitted, and yeah, I want that logo. I will give you the logo. It's it's gonna be from us, and we're gonna do this. Um, okay. And I wanna ask my fans to stalk Bellator and Scott Cooker and their matchmaker Rich to get me on their roster. Oh God! Oh God! Stalking. Guys, 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 guys. She said it, okay? Ed Harris the third. You got permission. She said, let's do this, okay? Stalker. We're all gonna do this. We're all gonna <laughs> do Julia it. Julia Thune, stalker, no problem. I'm actually trying to get Scott Coker on the show to ask him some questions. So hopefully, you know, he'll, he'll respond and get on here. But uh yeah. Um well Cindy, it, is is there anybody that, that you wanna thank, you know? Yeah. I wanna thank uh my brother, who is my coach, Misha, of course. Uh my best uh my friends who are always there for me. Um and uh, Aaron from Lop MMA, who has always been amazing with me, and although he isn't like really sponsoring anymore, like if I need to talk, he's always there, and I appreciate his friendship too. Okay, well, and then Cindy, you know, definitely, I'm gonna I'm definitely, you know, for your next fight, I, I want to help, you know, hype it up. So I'm gonna ask you back, talk to us for about 15 minutes, talk about it, you know, and then yeah. And I want to put a little shout out to all the real featherweights out there, like Zara, Pam, Faith Van Dam. Um, and the other federates that like showed up, like even Josette, uh, Cotton, everybody, like don't give up. We're here to stay. She said, "Don't give up, featherweights. Don't give up." Cindy, We're not giving up. One last thing, as cute as you can do it, because I know you're very charismatic. Okay, you like the f the flowers and the pixie dust. Listen, I I, I got to get you to do this perfect. Okay. Yeah. Could you say, "Hey, this is a uh, Cindy what, Battle Cat Dandois, and you're watching Coach Shelton Harrison." Coach. Say to how do you have Coach, Coach Harrison? Shelton Harrison. Yeah, she, she the sh is a different sound for me. Sh Coach okay, Shelton Harrison. Okay. Coach Shelton Harrison. Okay. Hi everybody. My name is Cindy Battlecat Down the I'm from Belgium and you're all watching Coach Shelton Harris. Oh. I messed up, right? And you're a teacher. And you're a teacher. How did you mess Say it again. up? Okay. Say it again. Say it again. <laughs> okay. Coach, Teach me. Coach Shelton Harrison. Okay, you see? Okay. So, again? Yeah. One last <laughs> you don't time. make the blooper, right? Okay. That's okay. So, hi, everybody. My name is Cindy Dandwa. I'm from Belgium. Uh, and you're all watching Coach Shelton Harrison. Yes. Hey, you got it right the second time. Hey, Valentina Shevchenko totally messed it up. So, thank you. Thank you. You got it. <laughs> it's the language barrier. We cannot help it. It's okay. Hey, you speak better English than me. I got this southern accent, so your English is perfect. Okay, it's the best. I love yeah. it. You should have. You should hear me speaking French. I also speak French and also Dutch and also Greek. So you speak Greek? Nah. Damn, <laughs> Damn you, smart. Like, I'm smarter than I look like. No, you look smart too. But you're smart. <laughs> Yeah. So only but compliments, Cindy. You know, definitely, I, I appreciate you. You're a good ambassador to the sport. You are a phenomenal lady. You're a great mother, and I, I appreciate you just just doing this. And you know, next time it'll be a little shorter. I'm just I was so excited talking to you. So you, you gotta Thank forgive you for me. Thank you for the support. I appreciate. And I have to go now because I know the kids are messing up. Later. <laughs> Talk to you later. Bye. Bye.